Hi everybody, my name is Jared Bendis. I'm Associate Professor and Chair of Game Design at the Cleveland Institute of Art. In addition to teaching game design, I collect games. Board games, video games, I teach board games, card games, dice games, all sorts of games. And I was showing people some of my fun bits of my collection. This is, by the way, the oldest game in my collection. This is a Mansion of Happiness from 1864. It's a beautiful print. It's a color lithograph. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway, I collect old board games. And my friends know I collect old board games, and they are always teasing me about different things. And one of my friends recently, as a joke, I think it was a gag gift, got me this beautiful metal plaque of the Monopoly patent. That bastard. Now, why am I saying that bastard? Well, there's a kind of a running gag in the gaming world about Monopoly, because everybody hates it. Of course, we really can't all hate it that much. It is still one of the most popular games in the world, but we all like to razz in it. It's one of those things that we do. But obviously, there's something going on with Monopoly if after 85 plus years, it's still such a popular game. Maybe we're playing it wrong, but we'll get back to that. There's another reason I don't like this, and of course, the patent is by Charles Darrow, who is the inventor of Monopoly, but he really wasn't the inventor of Monopoly. And that's also one of the things that we talk about when we're dealing with game design, is like, who really invented Monopoly? What's the true story of Monopoly? But I was thinking to myself, could I get a really early Monopoly set? Kind of just something that, you know, started making me wonder, what would it take to get an early Monopoly set? Now, there's a lots of things that we can do when talking about early Monopoly. Early Monopoly could be Charles Darrow, 1833, sitting in his kitchen and making a real set all by himself. There's some truth to that. He really did hand make a bunch of Monopoly sets. And those are extremely rare, and I don't have that kind of money. And also, they're not really going to look like I want. Uh, Darrow didn't actually use uh, the tokens. He thought we should bring our own tokens. He used different money. Darrow took his game his game, both to Milton Bradley and to Parker Brothers, and they both turned him down. As he started to sell it on his own, Parker Brothers went, well, maybe we can do this. And they actually started to work together, and they actually agreed to publish his game. They also asked him to sign a uh, contract saying that he was the sole creator of the game. And he was like, yeah, of course, I'm the sole author of this game. We'll get back to that. So in 1935, Parker Brothers starts to make a copy of the game. Now, they're desperately trying to protect their intellectual property. So they go out and they say, you know, uh, you need to make a patent on your game. Go out and start trying to patent their game. So they're trying to create a patent for Monopoly. In the meantime, they trademark the word Monopoly. So the very first Parker Brothers boxes have the word Monopoly, and the only protection on the box is the word trademark. That's early 1935. Then, also in 1935, they have trademark, and then they have patent pending because they have submitted a patent. And that's when the story gets a little weird. You see, Charles Darrow didn't really create Monopoly. He was actually at a friend's house in the early 30s, and they played a game. And the friend was like, this is this game we always play, and he showed it to him. And it had all the things that you're used to seeing in Boardwalk and Park Place and Marvin Gardens. It's a game that they used to play amongst their friends. It was, i say, the original print-and-play games. Everybody made a copy of this game, and he said, ooh, can I make a copy of the game? He's like, sure, you can make a copy of the game. And he made a copy of the game, and he started to manufacture the game. And he added a lot of the things that we know about Monopoly. He added a lot of the imagery that we know about Monopoly is really him, the color bars, things like that. So in the meantime, when Parker Brothers starts to run their patent search, they find out there's another patent because it turns out that the game that his friend showed him was based on another game that was patented. Not only was it patented, it was repatented. The game that was patented was called the Landlord's Game. And this is a replica of the 1904 game. And look at that. It looks a lot like Monopoly. We have things like um, collect your wages, and there's the poorhouse, and go to jail. So there's a lot to be said. This looks a lot like Monopoly. And so basically what happened was, is there was a woman named McGee, and she created this game as a lesson to teach people about the evils of monopolies and specifically Georgian economics. And it was a cool game and intellectuals liked the game and it spread, not too wide, but people played it. It spread in two different directions. One direction, it made it all the way to the Quakers in Atlantic City, and that's where they started to modify the game and make it all Atlantic City, New Jersey type names. And the other direction is it went to Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, it hit a bunch of college students, and there was one college student who was like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a game. And when he went, he found out there already was a patent. 
He also found out that you probably couldn't trademark the name Monopoly, so instead he trademarked the name Finance, and he sold the game to another game company, and that was also in the 1930s. So now, Parker Brothers doing their research, and they find out that there are two competing intellectual properties for Monopoly. One is this patent, patents, because there's the patent from 1904, but then she made a new patent, and that's what we're going to talk about. And then the other is this other game called Finance, which is made by another game company. So they turned to McGee and they said, we really want to buy your patent because they, they're desperate to protect Monopoly while Darrow's patent is being worked on. And she agreed to do it for $500 and that she would, they would produce two more of her games and that they would actually put out the very, very, very important game to her, which of course is the Landlord's game. Now, everyone knew this was the Monopoly game because it was the Monopolies are Evil game. I mean, they were calling it the Monopoly game. Matter of fact, the guy who had the finance game was going to call it Monopoly, but again, he thought you couldn't trademark the word Monopoly. When they went to do the finance game, that was already a game company. That guy had already sold it to the game company, and the game company was like, sure, we'll sell it to you, and they got $10,000 for theirs. But once they owned a patent, they could protect their game. And so they had what was called a single patent game. And that box has one patent number on it. And then at the end of the year, this is still 1935, the very, very end of the year, late December 1935, Darrow's patent comes through and they end up putting both patent numbers on it. And then you've got the two patent. So in 1935, there are four different versions of the Parker Brothers game. Now, back then, games came a little bit differently than they do today. They had boxes and they had boards. The idea of putting a box and a board together into a deluxe package, very, very snazzy. Those were deluxe packages. But generally, you would get a little box and you would get the board and they would come separately. And this is where it gets a little bit weird because as we're looking at all the inventory, Parker Brothers is just rolling stuff out. So as things change, you might get a mix of different pieces from different times and things like that. Now, old Monopoly sets are not worth a lot of money. I mean, the Darrow ones are, but anything post-1935, they're not really worth that much money because, believe it or not, very little has changed in the 80-something years. That being said, people on the internet are jerks, right? probably one of them if you're watching this video, and they don't know what they have. So everyone's like, oh, I saw copyright in 1933, so it must be... It's actually not that complicated. There's a couple of really, really good websites. And more importantly, there's this wonderful book by Phil Orbanes. Phil is awesome, by the way. He's like the world's authority on Monopoly. He's got all the details in here. There's two different websites out there as well. I'll include them in the links that really help you understand how do you know how old your Monopoly set is. The problem is nobody had a full Monopoly set online when I went to buy it. So I was going to have to piece this baby together. Uh, piecing it together was not going to be easy. I actually have an older Monopoly set. I think I have one from the 50s at home, but I wanted a really, really old one so I could be done with it. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that I am not interested in any way, shape, or form of this being mint. I know condition means a lot to collectors, but uh, that's a whole different story. I just wanted to go through and say, what would it take for me to put together a Monopoly set? So I started looking online, uh, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and everybody, nobody knows what they have. Everybody says, oh, I have an original, oh, I have an original. It's really, really annoying. I did finally find somebody who said they had a 1936 Monopoly set. But then when I zoomed in, it was a 1935 Monopoly set. So I messaged them and they're like, listen, we got so much parts in here, we don't know what we have. But we're gonna start off with the, the basically starting premise of my kit, the black box. This is a Monopoly black box that all the pieces have to fit in this box. Now, this little flag here, someone put a sticker on. Maybe I can have the sticker removed. Maybe I can't. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But what's really important here is if you look really, really close, what you're going to see is there is a patent number. One patent number. And the patent number 1.5 million, that is the McGee patent number. This box is before Darrow's patent was cleared, which means this box is 100% from 1935. Isn't that wild? 1935. Look at that. It's empty, by the way. Cardboard box from 1935. Also, it's got a really weird typo. Uh, if you look, the period's in the wrong place. It's kind of like a weird, like the period, it's like REG space period. Anyway, but they all look like that. That's what this looks like. This is a Parker Brothers, Salem, Mass, New York, London, uh, Monopoly box from 1935. So this is my starting point. Now everything is going to revolve around me filling in the blanks. Can I get a complete Monopoly set, single patent McGee from 1935? All right, I have the box. 
By the way, to get the box, I had to get a lot of other crap. This box here, which I do believe is from the 40s, I can give you the exact date. I don't really care because it's definitely not from the 30s. It's kind of cool because it shows you uh, the pieces are on the front. This is kind of a neat one. It shows you the, the, seven, the, seven, the seven tokens that came with it. And what's neat about it is, is that during the war, when it didn't come with the seven tokens, the box didn't have the seven tokens on it. But these are the seven tokens. The tokens are really interesting as well. We're going to get to those in a second. Originally, Daryl wanted you to bring your own tokens to the game. Parker Brothers went out and actually bought tokens from somebody else. And so we're going to look at sort of how the tokens sort of evolved a little bit. But if you look, this box only has one patent number on it, and it's the 2 million patent number. This is the Daryl patent number. The reason it doesn't have the McGee is the McGee patent number had already expired by then. So you're going to have single patent numbers dual patent numbers, and then as time passes, you go back to single patent number again. And now, of course, the patent's expired, so it doesn't even matter. And then I got one more box. This box is beat to hell, but this guy had some really good stuff for me. And if you look at it, it looks exactly like the other box, except if you look over here, it says U.S. patents, and it's got both numbers. So this is the dual patent number. So this means that this is going to be early or mid-1936, because the patent didn't exist until the end of 35. So this could be 36, 37. Once you get to 37, the boxes turn blue. If you've got a blue one, it ain't 35. Now, I need to find a board that matches. I have a lot of boards. This board, uh, look at that. That's modern. And by modern, I mean this is 1950s. Um, so I don't got to worry about this board. Definitely out. This board is in terrible shape, as in, look, it's in two pieces, terrible shape. And the funny thing is they all look the same. They're just a Monopoly board. Probably the same looking Monopoly board that you had growing up, except when I look at it, what you're gonna notice is it's a single patent and this is 1946. So that's what this is. Interestingly enough, the board looks exactly like all the other boards do, except right here where we have in jail and just visiting. So one little thing about this that isn't here on the earlier boards, as I'll show you. So this is the dual patent board. And this is actually a really nice one, by the way. It is an early one. You can see it's got the dual patents right here. And if I open it up, it's also going to have the dual patents in the center. And you're like, well, won't it be automatic? No. Actually, there are some where it'll be single patent on the front, dual patent in the center. Why? Because they had, they, they had prints left over. So they're kind of running through the materials. They're going to use it up until it's gone. So you'll actually find ones that have one thing on the front and one thing on the center. So this is both. So you've got both here, so it matches. And what's really neat is right here in the corner where it says, just visiting, it says very carefully, copyright 1933, Chaz B. Darrow. So you've got the copyright here that only happens on the early boards. So this is the copyright on the board. So you've got the copyright on the board. So this is actually a very nice board, by the way. But outside of that, this should look identical to your Monopoly board. There is no difference here whatsoever. It's just that one little copyright in the corner, and of course what the copyright in the center is, and then the, the front. So it's really, really just more aesthetics. Now, I did find somebody who was selling it all by themselves. It's a little bit beat up. It's got some frayed edges here, but it's a single patent. Look at that, the original single patent. So this is this board is from 1935. How do I verify? I look in the center, and if I look in the center, it is also single patent, 1935. Now this board's got some some flaws to it. There's like a little bit of a little bit of a mistake there, a little bit of a little bit of a nick there. You know, it's been it's well played. Let's be practical. If I want to play Monopoly, I'm gonna pull the brand new Monopoly set. I'm not gonna worry about my antiques. This is about putting together a nice collectible for myself. So there it is. Whatever the condition it is, and I'll probably have this preserved a little bit. I'll have a friend of mine's a preservation guy. He'll go through, it'll stabilize, make sure nothing else bad's gonna happen to it. But we have a board from 1935, single patent, and a box from 1935, single patent, or, or really a good part of the way there, because those are the few items that actually have a date on them. Now I get to the weirder part, the directions. First of all, I got so many sets of directions and they're all beat to crap. They're in multiple pieces. I had to go out separately. That's why it's an old plastic bag. I had to go out separately and find it, and I did. As a matter of fact, here it is, the instructions that I need, and it says copyright 1935 Parker Brothers, and it's got the patent of 1.5 million right there. So these are, and it's, this, is, this was very, very delicate, because again, it's 85 plus years old. So I have the directions now. So I have the directions, I have the box, I have the board. Great. Now I need more stuff. That's right. I have a lot 
of stuff. There's like three or four different Monopoly sets here all put together. And I've got to figure out which of these is going to be most appropriate to go inside my box to create one set. The rest of the parts, I'm going to sell. All right. So where do we begin? Well, I have the box. I have the board. I have the directions. The next easiest thing to look for would be dice. And so I have this set of dice and I have this set of dice, and I will be honest with you, uh, these dice are older than these dice, but nobody would really know. So we're gonna go with these dice. These dice are actually from 1935. These dice are probably from the 40s. They are the same size. The, the, the aging and the wearing probably has nothing to do with the aging and the wearing, except that they just got older. So there we go, and now I have dice. Yay, dice. Now I have a lot of tokens. And it's weird is, if I were to come over here, obviously we've got the hat. But if you'll notice, I've got different hats and I've got two of them here. And if you look, one of them is much darker than the other. And that's because the earlier hats were actually made with a different chemical composition and they actually tarnished and they turned black. And so that's great because instantly I know which ones are which, which is great because I have two sets of seven and they're perfect. So there you go. I have the two sets of seven, the darker ones, and then the lighter ones I'm just putting in a pile of not that old. I mean, old, but not that old. These are from the 30s. Other things that change over time, look at the car, the size of the car, the, the, the little details on the car. That's another example. And somewhere I read that the cannon mold got damaged, and so they had to use a different cannon mold later on. Another fascinating one is the thimble. And since the tokens were originally from another game that were purchased later to be added for Monopoly, you can see where it says, for a good girl, on the bottom of the thimble. And I've got another thimble here. You can see a little bit clear. It also says, for a good girl, though you don't see it on later editions. So I bet you if you go home, you're not going to see for a good girl on your thimble. So now I have a beautiful set of seven, and I have the battleship, the iron, the shoe, the thimble, the hat, the race car, and the cannon. If I come over here, I do actually have another set of seven. Get rid of that. I don't need that. So I do have another set of seven which are also the older, but then I have a pile of a mix of new and old, and I don't need, look at the doggy. I don't need any of these, these are out. So now I have, great, so I have dice, and I have my tokens, yay. Now, what about the houses? Well, this is plastic. I don't need plastic, I need wood. Well, there's lots of different wood houses I've got. I've got the dark green wood and I've got the light green wood. Obviously, it's the light green wood. Interestingly enough, as I'm looking through them all, I find one that isn't painted at all. And what's weird is, is in my research, I found out that in Darrow's original version, the houses weren't painted. And I'm curious to know if, if this is actually a really, really, really early unpainted Darrow house. There actually were originally just molding that was cut, which is kind of neat. So obviously the plastic is no good. There are 32 houses of Monopoly set. So I went through and found a matching old set and there are 32 houses. Beautiful, I've got 32 wood houses, great. Now, what about the hotels? I found that I have different size hotels. I've got the big wooden hotel and I've got the smaller wooden hotel. I don't have a lot of the big wooden hotels and obviously it is the smaller wooden hotel that everybody used and I have lots of wooden hotels. Some of them have been damaged by uh, well, obviously curious kids. And uh, some of them played with, but I have way, I have a ton of hotels here, but I just picked out, again, 12 matching hotels of the right age. Not the brand newest, spinking, shiniest ones. So there you go. So I have dice, I have hotels, I have houses. So we're getting somewhere, it's pretty cool. Now on to the cards. Now, what's funny about the cards is I have lots of stacks of cards, community chess and chance cards. So some of them have copyrights on them, say 1936, and some of them don't. There's no copyright on them at all. And I was really confused by this, and I looked it up, and it turns out that up until the 1950s, none of the cards had copyrights on them. And then in the 1950s, they added a copyright. And if you look at your set, your set's probably going to have the 1936 and another copyright and another copyright. So of these, the 1936 ones are the newer ones, and the ones that don't have a copyright are the older ones. But these are from the 30s. These are from 1936. 
Even these are in 36 because in 1935, there were no pictures. That's correct. In 1935, the community chest and chance cards literally had no pictures on them. There are 16 cards, and I basically have, a, I have two full sets of these, which is pretty awesome. So I'll have to decide which full set I'm going to keep. Both of these are from 1935. Interestingly enough, there is a middle set between the 1935 without pictures and the 1936 uh, with the rich uncle on them, and those actually have different drawings. And you can run across those every so often, and those are really neat because those definitely get dated into really, really early 1936. But these are my cards these are from 1935, so I will take one set of these cards and I will add them to the pile. All right. Now, what else do I have left? I have money. Oh, my God. I have so much money. So much money came in with these things. Look at this. This is Milton Bradley money. This is a Parker Brothers game. I don't need the Milton Bradley money. What else do I need? So, interestingly enough, the, the dollars that don't have any numbers, any date or name on them, are relatively recent. This is actually modern Monopoly money. So we're going to take that aside. That is out. The old Monopoly money is actually going to say copyright 1935 Parker Brothers. There's actually an older Monopoly money that was done by Darrow, but we're not going to talk about that because that really wasn't part of the 1935 set that I'm looking at. So now I've got to figure out which Monopoly money I want. Why? Because we have a problem. We have this hundred and we have this hundred. And basically, we've got different colored money. So there's the salmon colored hundreds, and there are the sort of golden colored hundreds. And what you find out is, is that the money changed color over time. So only in 1935 were you able to get the salmon colored hundreds. In 1936, you get the salmon colored hundreds, but they were actually a smaller size. So when I was actually searching for the money, I wouldn't just have to ask people what size, what color the money was, but what size the money was as well. You're like, well, why would I have to search for money? Well, that's because the original set that I bought didn't have enough money. There's actually a known quantity of money that's been tradition almost the entire time. It's only recently been changed of exactly how many bills come in a Monopoly set, and this isn't the right one. So I'm going to have to augment this Monopoly money with this Monopoly money until I get the right number. All right, the money is all counted out. That is 25 hundreds, 20 one hundreds, 30 fifties, 50 twenties, 40 tens, 40 fives, and 40 ones, which means there's $15,140, which until recently was the standard amount of money in a Monopoly set. So, getting somewhere, right? All the pieces are getting to go. I've only, only got one thing left, and that is the property cards. Oh my goodness, I have so many sets of property cards. Now, property cards are pretty straightforward. In early 1935, the property cards, the backs, did not have the mortgage on the back. They were blank. So if these were blank on the back, they would be 100% early 1935. So there you got that. Now, the fun part is, is the fronts. Now, modern ones have a copyright on them. They don't have a copyright on them, but that could be all the way up to the 50s before you see copyright on them. So how else can you tell how old they are? Well, you can also look at whether or not there's a black border on them. You notice there's no black border on them. That's another good sign right there. Now, luckily for me is there was a complete set in one of the boxes that actually dates until the, the mid-30s. So this is a full set. But I do want to point out some of the other weirdnesses that actually have happened when you're looking at these cards. So these, by the way, they've aged together. They're beat to hell. They're bent. They're whatever. But this is a full set of Monopoly property cards. But I have so many cards here, I want to show you some of the difficulties that you run into. For instance, let's take a look at Oriental Avenue. Look at that. Three different colors. Which one is the right color? Does it really matter? Is it an age thing? Is it an aging thing? Is it when it was printed? So that's a really fun one to look at is how the colors work. The other you can look at if you really want to know, if Park Place and Boardwalk have black text instead of white text, that will definitely be early 1935, but I don't have early 1935. There's stuff on the back. The other thing you can look for is the size of the font. Park Place can have like a really, really big font. This one doesn't. This isn't, by the way, doesn't mean it's not 1935. It just means that if it had a huge font, it definitely was 1935. Also, by the way, ugh, more color variations. The same thing goes with Mediterranean. Look at that, more color variation. So the color variation thing is going to be really, really awful, but that could be aging. It could be when it was printed. But most importantly, all of these, there's very little differences here that will distinguish any of these things from what year. Obviously, the, the, the big, stiff, whiter cards are much more new than the other ones. 
Now, there's one last little bit of a funny one here, and that is Marvin Gardens. Now, remember I told you that Daryl went to that guy's house and had dinner and he played Monopoly there? Well, it turns out that he's the one who misspelled Marvin Gardens on his board, and that typo actually has been here for 85 years. But here's what the weirdest part is is that up until the 1950s, the rent on Marvin Gardens is $22, but it's the most expensive of the three properties, which means it's supposed to have a higher rent. And in the 1950s, they corrected it so that it is actually $24. So if I look at these two cards, they both look relatively new, but interestingly enough, this one here for 22, that's gotta be an older card because it's got the old date. And it's a typo, by the way, it's a typo that lasted for 20 years. All the way from the 30s until the 50s, the rent was wrong. And other than that, other than the aging of the card, there is no way of telling the difference between a card from 1930, late 1935, all the way up to 1954. It's just the way it works. I mean, there's some really, you have to really be the king of subtleties here, but for the most part, the cards are identical. And that's why Monopoly sets aren't worth that much because nothing has changed in all of these years. So these are all my sort of extra spare cards. And I've got this enormous amount of spare parts here that are gonna go right back onto eBay so somebody else can finish whatever their special set is. Now, what's really funny is, as I mentioned the patent, and I wanna show you one last little patent story, and that is the patent on easy money. Milton Bradley wanted to get in this game. Matter of fact, everybody wanted to get in this game, but Parker Brothers was being ruthless because they didn't just have a trademark, they had a patent. They just have one patent, they had two patents, and they wanted to make sure that everybody was going to pay them money. They wanted to get licensed. By the way, this is Easy Money from 1936, and it's really awesome about Easy Money is, is it looks a lot like Monopoly. It's got its own little innovations, by the way. Everything's like on the board, and there's little different uh, wood houses, of different colors and things. It's pretty cool. But the fun part is the box. And if you look on the box, the box has two patents on it. But these patents aren't Milton Bradley's patents. These are the Monopoly patents. Milton Bradley licensed the Monopoly patents from Parker Brothers so they can make easy money. And Parker Brothers loved this. They were trying to strengthen their patents. They wanted to make sure that nobody, nobody was going to infringe on their intellectual property. Matter of fact, they actually took the old finance game that they had bought and they released it to kind of look like a Monopoly knockoff. And they, they modified a little bit here and there, but the joke was, is they wanted Monopoly to be Monopoly. And again, for 85 plus years, Monopoly has been the king. It's been Monopoly. Now, we all hate Monopoly because it grounds people down. It doesn't have to, by the way. You gotta play by the rules. None of these house rules, the free parking doesn't work. You have to make sure you auction the property off. If you play Monopoly by the rules, it's a very different game. If you make it so that if all the houses are used up, you can't actually do anything else until another house is free, it's a very different game. So playing Monopoly by the rules is probably not what you've been doing your entire life, and that's why Monopoly is torturous. Now, right now, changing the rules back to the real rules of Monopoly, that's got to be tricky for you too. But Monopoly is not a terrible game. Think about it. Another commercially designed game. I don't mean chess or checkers. I mean a commercially designed game. Somebody where we know who designed what when from 85 years ago. Name me another game that's this old, that's this popular. And I can name one, by the way, because sorry, actually, from the 20s. But beyond that, these games do not last for generations the way Monopoly has. So it must be something right. And my job, my job as a game designer and as a teacher is to explore that and to look into it. And now... And now, and now I own it. I own a 1935 first year of production Parker Brothers Monopoly set. And thanks for watching and hearing my little twist on the history of Monopoly. There's a lot more to the history of Monopoly. Look in the links. Don't be mad if you think that you have something worth a lot of money and you don't. It's not worth a lot of money. None of this is worth a lot of money. It's an old game, but it was so popular. Millions and millions of them are out there, and there's still millions and millions out there. So have fun, play your game, and if somebody likes Monopoly and you don't, let them have their fun. Let them enjoy it. Again, my name's Jared. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and if you're nice, comment.